How do you create a business that will impact a billion people? Our next guest took on that challenge and was inspired to launch a company that's changing healthcare as we know it. ClickMedics is a software technology that allows patients and health workers to get consultations from specialists via a mobile phone app. Thanks to the worldwide rise of mobile phone access and technology, ClickMedics connects patients in the world's most remote regions to the much needed expertise of healthcare workers, physicians, and specialists, often hundreds of kilometers away. Ting Shi is the founder and CEO of ClickMedics. She spent five years implementing mobile health programs in more than 15 countries, working with government and private partners to develop financially sustainable health programs. She was recently named the 2015 Toyota Mother of Invention. That's just one in a host of awards and accolades she's picked up. She holds an MBA from the MIT Sloan School of Management and a graduate degree in systems engineering from MIT. Ting sat down with me in our Washington, D.C. studio to discuss the vision behind her life-changing and often life-saving technology. So you have a background in computer science. So when does it, the light bulb go off and you say, I want to come up with a global healthcare solution? I mean, it, they don't seem to match, but in a sense they do, don't they? In a sense, what I learned is from shadowing doctors in Africa is that doctors act somewhat like engineers. When they look at a patient, they sort of figure out what is wrong with this patient and diagnose them just like I would debug a software program. So a lot of what they do is actually more systematic than art and, and magic black box. So when I, look, when I shadow them, I realize, well, there's a lot of repeated processes that can become somewhat collected through a health worker or someone who's not the expert, because 80% of the doctor's time is spent collecting the right medical history information so that they can use their knowledge and provide that diagnosis and treatment plan. So what we've done is shift that work to a health worker or a nurse who's with the patient, allow her to collect the right information with prompts that shows up on a mobile application, and then transmit everything to the doctor. So then typically the doctor can spend just a three to five minutes to come up with that expert diagnosis. So explain for our viewers what ClickMedics is, how it works. So ClickMedics is sort of your one-click gateway to all of healthcare. And we have on our network a suite of different so specialists, yeah. doctors, and let's say you have a weird disease and you've gone through some doctor, you just don't know what to do. Well, what's the best way to find the cure? Well, every doctor has their own network of experts. And very quickly, if you ask a doctor, who would you go for that? Very quickly, you'll find the right doctor. And that's what we do. We can connect the patient from just one click, here's my problem, all the way into here's the right doctor, here's how much it'll cost, here's how you get to them remotely or in person, and here's the rest of your treatment plan. Are there still technical limitations at all though? There are some, which is when you look at Internet of Things, consumer product, gadgets that measure your blood pressure that connects your smartphone. I think it's really ideal that we could have every patient do that, but the truth is a lot of people have smartphones, they actually use it to make phone calls, SMS, and maybe Facebook. And real medical use still needs to be guided maybe by a trained caregiver or a nurse. But at the end of the day, it's really about how do you help that person who can't help themselves because they have maybe chronic diseases, heart failure, or diabetes, to really follow a plan that could consist of 20 medications. You have to take them at different intervals. You have to eat different things. You have to get up and exercise. It's not easy, especially when you're in that situation in the first place. So it's a lot more than just a gadget. So what we use the mobile applications for is really to empower those around the patient who can actually help the patient. Let me talk to you about where you're at. I, I, last I read, you're in 15 countries. You're expanding into Asia. What's your vision? Where do you see it going? Is the sky the limit? Well, what's amazing about what we do is when we start with the patient and we sell our software to health businesses, we track them throughout. So not do we, not only do we help them right on the spot, we can track that patient five years down the road, 10 years down the road. And as you know, with the tsunami of chronic diseases, the intervention point is really around mid thirties or even lower in some countries and really tracking that patient throughout their life. We call it the click, the one click to healthcare throughout the rest of the person's lives. And that's really our vision to help over a billion people 
get better health outcomes. How soon to a billion? How soon to a billion? Well, it's amazing how when you deploy simultaneously in so many countries, it grows pretty fast. Um, currently, we have over 200,000 patients being tracked longitudinally. Within one year, we'll get to one million, and it multiplies as we have more health workers signing on at the same time. So we can multiply 10x within the next two, three years. So certainly in a short-term horizon, we should be able to reach a billion people. Anytime somebody develops something like this, uh, you have a vision, a scalable vision, but you also have a vision of uh, anecdotal evidence. You, you want somebody somewhere where you can tell a story, this person had this outcome. And I know you have those stories now, of stories from like China and India. Can you share just a few stories of, of how you're seeing this making a difference in, in patients' lives? Sure, I'll share a couple. One is a nine-year-old girl that we saw from China. She was diagnosed with brain tumor. She had a number of surgeries in China, and there just isn't any certainty on what diagnosis or treatment or surgery could actually work. So her very worried parents actually translated all of her medical history and all of the diagnosis that's done, transmitted through Click Medics, and we sent it to a number of the best oncologists within the United States. And within a few days, they were able to basically search around the world for the newest oncology treatment and provide back the expert opinions on the options that are available, both accessible and those that are in research that are only known by some of these world-class oncologists. That's just one example in China, but I know you're seeing this in, in other countries here in the United States as well as India. Yeah, yeah. So in India, we work with Medtronic on ear infection screening, and two-thirds of the population at some point in their life have an ear, ear infection. It's very, very painful. It may blister, and some of them may lose their hearing altogether completely treatable. So we train health workers, and they're about 17-year-old teenage girls, to learn the skill of using our mobile application and an otoscope device and screen for the patient. And they're actually taught to make a provisional diagnosis, and they're about 90% as accurate as that of the ear surgeon's diagnosis. So just by training a single health worker, she can see over a 1,000 patients in a month. And imagine at that rate, we can very quickly train up the capacity and screen the entire country just for a single disease. And we're, of course, expanding it to diabetes and heart diseases, as well as nutrition issues in India. How do you see the evolution of healthcare, um, given what you're seeing right now with, in just a short period of time with this device? Where do you see it going long term? Healthcare currently, as you know, it's very segmented. And even in countries where there's a single payer like Botswana, the government pays for everything. Singapore, government pays for everything, including China, pays for most things. But every hospital, every clinic has their own set of medical record, their own set of technology, and they don't share. So a single patient might have 10 records across the country, and none of them talk to each other, and none of the doctors talk to each other. So no wonder we have triples of costs in terms of medication and treatment and therapeutics. The way I see is it really needs to be integrated. There's a lot of talk among payers on consumer engagement, which means patients following their treatment plan. Integrated care delivery, which means doctors actually collaborate regardless of which state they're in or what specialty they're in, and really create a single plan to help the patient get better. Back in the good old days, uh, you won't remember this, I'm much older than you, the computers were gigantic and yes. monstrous, um, and it seemed like the big ideas were big. Um, now all the devices seem to get smaller and smaller. This clearly was a big idea. What does it take uh, to be an innovator? And do you think innovators are out there coming up with the big ideas? I mean, what does it take to create a big idea? Take some naivety, a bit of stupidity, <laughs> a lot of courage and persistence. I mean, when we first came up with the idea of use mobile phones to deliver healthcare for a billion people, it seemed very naive, and we actually just put two and two together. Yeah, it's got to work. What else are you going to use for people who don't have any connectivity? They have a phone, that's it. That's all we have. Let's MacGyver this, right? And then it takes a lot of persistence and really just knocking down on doors. We, and luck, oh, let's not forget luck. 
my cousin wor was a consultant on the Qualcomm project, and that's how we got our first client. And really just being brave and just show that this really works. What else are you going to do if you don't use mobile phones? There's just so much infrastructure causing any other me. So let's just narrow down the solution to these key components and start building from there, from the ground up, from the grassroots level. But you have to believe, I think, is the key thing that you're saying, because there's going to be a lot of bumps along the way, right? Yes. And I also believe in rapid prototyping, rapidly deploying into the field and seeing if it worked. We were actually trying to fail as quickly as we could. <laughs> and that's why we went to Africa. There is not much internet. And there aren't any doctor, maybe one for the whole country. And there are a lot of diseases. Botswana has about 40% HIV rate in their urban cities. OK, if it can work there, it can probably work anywhere else. If viewers are watching this, they want to know more about the technology, the company, where do they go? They can go to our website, clickmedics.com, or follow us on Twitter, ClickMedics, or Facebook. Ting Shi, thanks so much. Thank you. Coming up next, are you linked in to the new way of doing business? We'll find out in a moment.